If you're watching this video to learn how to score A's in your art examinations, this is not the best video for you. But if anything, this is a survival guide. So please keep watching. Hi, I'm Eve. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Ew. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while because this is a video that I needed because I didn't really know what to expect um, going into Sec 4 so I'm making this video basically this is going to be a lot of my experience and a lot of the bad things that they don't tell you about art um, I mean some seniors did warn me when I was in Sec 3 like don't take art you're gonna lose your money and your sanity that is what happened this is a video that is more focused on the examination part so i'm just gonna start off with some information i took the 6123 art gce o level syllabus i did paper one which is coursework and paper two which is drawing and painting to put it very simply, concisely, in my opinion, these are the few steps of the paper. 1. Choosing a theme and brainstorming. 2. First-hand studies. So like taking an object, for example, a mouse and just drawing the mouse, maybe the cursor or the whole thing, whatever. Number 3. Manipulation of set studies and trying to merge things together. I feel like this, is, this part is only, you'll get it if you're an art student. But if not, it's okay. You don't need to know. It's really weird. Number four, putting it all together into one singular painting, which not only showcases my artistic skills, but also possesses a deep, profound meaning behind several inanimate objects. I'm reading from my Notion page that I made for this because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was going to say. So that's what I'm looking at. My laptop is here. So that's basically the papers that I took and stuff. I'm not gonna share how much I got because that's not the point of this video. I did pass, okay? After the year-end holidays and when school started last year, um, I my mental health was not that good because I had forgotten how stressful art was. Most of the year, I believe half of my conversations about art is me complaining about art because I feel like I was a little bit burdened by it. It was for paper one, it's such a long project that have to you have to keep doing for majority of the year. You're stuck with this project and you have you can't you can't not do it because it's compulsory. If you're considering taking art, these are the main few things I didn't really like about my experience or just a few areas of my experience in general. Number one is artist block. Ironically, the one year where my art determined a part of my future, I could not think of any ideas. Last year, my I feel like my teachers didn't really like me, my art teachers, because they would ask me like, okay, so what does this mean? Or like, do you have an idea of what you're gonna do? And I'll be like, I don't know because I had a major art block. I couldn't think of any interesting ideas that I was passionate about. And um, I think that's something you can't control. Artist block can happen to anybody, but it's really about what you're gonna do with it and how you're gonna deal with it, which I'll talk more about later. But it just really sucks because I'm supposed to have so many ideas and know what I'm going to do for this like ninth month long project but I couldn't think of anything and in the end my final art was something that I was I did not completely love I was embarrassed by it a little bit um and but it was just the direction my project ended up taking so yeah number two is deadlines if you want good boards, you need a lot of studies, drawings, especially for paper one. The number of drawings you need to do is more than you can imagine. So um, because of my poor time management skills, I was cramming for art a lot. Cramming for art is not as simple for cramming for other subjects because quality actually matters and it takes a while to 
you know, draw or paint. So it takes time. You can't do it in like five minutes, you know. Chances are, if you do cram and the quality is like shit, if your teacher cares, they will ask you to redo it. So, yeah. Number three, this was the part I didn't like at all because I am the kind of person who goes home right after school. I know I have a lot of friends who like go out after school and do stuff. Not me, I go home majority of the time. Once school ends, I'm going to leave the building. I'm not gonna stay there. The moment I stepped down from CCA, I was really happy because you know, you gotta stay back for CCA and sometimes CCA is really boring. However, the moment I stepped down, those same days became coursework days. So after school, the art students would go to the art room and just draw. If your class's progress was at my level, your teacher might like freak out and make you work on your final artwork whenever you can. Like any opportunity, she will be grabbing it and asking you to come to the art room and doing it. The art room was more of a second home than my classroom. If you are an art student in sec 3 or you are considering taking up art, you need to possess these two qualities. This is something I've talked about my other art friends. Art friend? This is some things that I've talked about with my art classmate. Number one is time management. I cannot stress how important time management is for art. There is never enough time. Especially when you're juggling a bunch of other subjects together with art. It's a key quality that you need to have. If you don't have it, learn to manage your time better. I'll be talking about that later. So please, if you have shit time management, you either work on it before you become an art student or before your final year, or don't take art at all. Number two is good art skills. My art classmates were definitely better than me at art, and I'm not saying that I wasn't good at art, I'm just saying that my classmates are on another level compared to me. You can compare me with my non-art classmate friends and I'll be pretty good, but if you compare me to my art classmates, I'm pretty bad. So for things like cramming your art, you need to have a good foundation of skills so you can churn out quality works in short amount of time. Because even if you manage your time well, there's still not enough time. <sighs> I'm having like war flashbacks right now. Now onto some tips that you can keep with you to ensure a smoother year ahead. By the time I post this video, you probably just started on your paper one, so... I am so happy I'm not in your position right now. <laughs> Number one is Pinterest boards. Oh my god, I love Pinterest for anything, but especially if you do art, Pinterest is your best friend. Once you have chosen a theme for paper one, go on to Pinterest and make a board of different paintings and artworks to take inspiration from. I know I said this isn't a video to teach you how to score well, but my teacher did say that examiners love artworks with interesting perspectives, so like, I'll put up some examples on the screen. My teacher also said that they unfortunately do not like art that is too gory or too depressing. Which is something that is not that easy because most of the art students are pretty depressed. In my school, we have this like place with a bunch of ex-students work for their old levels and my teacher would sometimes take them out and let us see them for inspiration and to see how we can score better. A lot of them were quite sad because I think art students are just sad people, you know. To meet with the markers, expectations, likes or dislikes, I don't know. I made a whole singular Pinterest board dedicated to paintings with interesting perspectives. There are a lot of them, so. For example, a theme that I thought might come out was Shattered. It did not come out, but there were, I got a lot of inspiration and even though the specific theme may not come out, you may still use those 
paintings as references. Number two is know your end product from the start. I was taught not to do this but this helped me so much because when I didn't know what I was going to do and how my painting was going to look at the end of it, it was hard for me to start. Knowing what I wanted the end to look like allowed me to know what pictures and drawings that I needed. I didn't do this for paper one so my vision at the start of doing paper one and the end product was very different. So this brings me to my next point, schedules and checklists. I want to emphasize again how important time management is. I needed timelines and lists to keep me organized. My teacher gave us a guide um, for paper two on like how many drawings, um, manipulations you need, blah blah blah, stuff like that. So I followed that guide and made like, okay, th this is how many drawings I'm gonna do. And then I put like, this is one study I'm gonna do, this is another study I'm gonna do. And I just wrote a whole list and checked them off. I hated paper two because you have three weeks to do paper two. And during these three weeks, they're not free for you to work completely on your art because during these three weeks, all your other examinations are happening. Art will be one of the last examinations that you will take. So, so yeah, I put all the pictures I needed to take and drawings I needed to do in a checklist and made a schedule for what I needed to get done each week. So, um, I mean, if you can, I've, I've never succeeded. Number four, make final work more enjoyable. This is specifically for people one because it is so long and you have to spend so many hours in the art classroom. You just gotta make it enjoyable for you. If your teacher was as nice as mine, listen to music or podcasts when you're drawing. I listened to so much Rotten Mango at school when I was doing my art. I also tried listening to audiobooks which might work for you but it was just too much mobile data for me. I don't think you need to think much when you're doing art, so let your other senses relax. Staying back after school was not as daunting to me. It's not something that I hated as much anymore after I realized that I could have McDonald's for lunch and drink coffee bean and listen to the High School Musical soundtrack. Number five is know that you're not alone. Cue You Never Walk Alone by BTS right now. After the end levels ended and it was just like the five of us in the classroom, we only had 10 classmates. It was a very small class. I wasn't close to them, but they were like my emotional support because I would be so stressed out when I was drawing and then I'll just look up and see all these other people like making beautiful paintings and know that they're all so stressed up too. Like, I'm not alone. Like a common question going around on the day of paper two is, do you sleep last night? For all levels, I actually slept for sec 3 or one of the sec 3 prelims or finals, I don't remember, but it, I basically stayed up to 4 a.m. finishing my art. Worst experience of my life. Also kind of fun though. I almost fell asleep during my listening comp though that day, so not the best idea, but it's a universal experience because my other friend didn't sleep at all. So for my old levels, I actually slept because I had a good number of days and I planned out really well and I was able to finish everything and I didn't have to stay up late to finish it while my other friends didn't sleep at all so yes you're gonna be miserable but you're gonna be miserable together honestly the best part of taking art last year was looking forward to listening to my podcast and eating McDonald's like I just loved that I don't know why um so yeah my god there's just some construction going on it's not going to be easy at all and I don't know if this was helpful I am a person with emotional connections to every artwork that I make because I remember the process of it and I was so sad that I have I had to give away my works and stuff. I did digital work for my paper one and 
once I finished, I took pictures of my progress on Procreate and took a picture of my iPad with my name tag. And then for paper 2, I took pictures of all my studies and all my boards because you will never get them back. And that sucks. The thing, one thing I hate about O-levels or like national exams is that you don't get your papers back. I know it's not reasonable to get your papers back, but I am a person that wants to improve. So I wanted to know what went wrong, you know, like I, I don't know if this video was helpful to you at all, but if I had seen this, I think it would have made me a bit more calm and not as stressed. So like I said, by the time I upload this, you probably just started on your paper one. So it's gonna be a freaking long journey. It's a marathon, okay? So don't wear yourself out. I was so burnt out because of art. It also affected my other subjects because I just didn't want to do anything at all. Take your time. Make sure you also take time to relax because this is your last year and you're still in term one. So appreciate your last moments with your friends and stuff, you know. Because this is the last time you're going to be doing everything. Okay, that's all I have for this video. Um, I hope this helped a tiny little bit, maybe. If you're not an art student, maybe this would have, I don't know, helped you understand how pain. If you are considering art though, Hi, it's Editing Eve here. Sorry if the audio is not as crisp as what you just heard. I'm using a microphone from my earpiece if that helps, but I just wanted to come on here and change my message to those considering taking art because the one that I filmed originally was a little bit um, negative. So I didn't want to discourage anybody from taking art as a subject because I really think that the experience that you get taking art is quite unique it's obviously very different from every other subject and i know every other subject has like a unique experience but you know i feel like not everybody can understand what it's like taking art as an o-level subject and doing a nine month long project and spending so much time in the classroom doing the same thing do i regret taking art as a subject Yes and no. Yes, because I felt so drained sometimes doing art and wished that I could have been maybe memorizing something instead, which I actually do not prefer, but I would not replace that experience with anything else. So, yeah, a bit cheesy, but it's true. Being an art student, in sec 4 was a very big part of my 2022 so yeah it was not all that bad and all that stressful it is but there are special parts about it too art can be very draining and art is very emotional so like being vulnerable in your art and getting a bad grade for it it's not the best feeling like, you might be so passionate about a project, but your teacher will say this is not going to get you good grades. And I think that is so weird. Like, how are you supposed to grade art? I know you're grading based on skills, but I that's, that's something I'll never understand and I don't want to understand. You only have one year before your O-levels to actually um, work on your art skills. So, one thing, because of your collective depression, you get close to the people around you because you understand and that is something that is rare because other people from other subject combinations do not get it but seriously though if you are extremely passionate have good time management have good art skills and have a good willpower resilience take art i think it'll be good for you okay i hope that i'm not gonna go to jail by making this video I don't know why I feel like it will. That's all. Sorry if you can hear any noise whatsoever. Okay, bye. Good luck. Seriously, good luck. Don't burn yourself out.